Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, so let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here. So we do see, don't be fooled, central bank digital currencies aren't just another form of digital money. CBDCs are best described as digital credit because they're programmable, meaning the government gets to decide what you may or may not spend it on. It's neo-feudalism people. And we do see down here, this is uh, talking about the recent update from the Bank of England. We do see Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming. Digital cash could be programmed to ensure it is only spent on essentials or goods which an employer or government deems to be sensible. The Bank of England has called on ministers to decide whether a central bank digital currency should be programmable, ultimately giving the issuer control over how it is spent by the recipient. Programming could become a key feature of any future central bank digital currency. How crazy is it that we are living in 2023 where we are seeing a blatant attack on decentralized finance, meaning, hey, let's cut all ties to the government in general and get away from this complete total control of the system. And now we are seeing all of the central bankers, all of the governments come together and say, hey, we need a CBDC. It is insane that most people are not seeing the true picture behind these CBDCs. I seen someone say the other day, you can't know for certain that CBDCs are going to be some sinister um, instrument for money. The thing is, is that the, the, the proof is there. We already see the writing on the wall. We are seeing programmability become a key feature around it and total control and also limitations being a big aspect around these cbdc's we do see over here bank of japan says central bank needs to be ready to issue a cbdc offer uh, or to offer the public a safe digital payment system remember when i talked about this just recently and i said that the key words here are safe they always want to make sure that it's safe secure it's transparent it's efficient they're selling you on a pipe dream they're selling you on this system that will in quotation marks, be digital, going to be efficient, secure, all this. But at the end of the day, we know for a fact that it's all marketing terminology. They do not care about efficiency. They don't care about transparency, security. They care about two things. And do you know what that is? Comment down below if you know. Greed and control. That's all it is about. Now, also over here, we do see EU to cap cash and crypto payments that can be accepted by persons providing goods or services. They set limits of 7,000 euros for cash payments and 1,000 euros for crypto transfers. These are all steps towards a CBDC. The biggest problem that I see happening, though, outside of CBDCs, is exactly what we are seeing here. They are capping and putting limitations on crypto payments. They're also cutting off crypto from the source. They're going after exchanges. They don't want exchanges to offer um, any crypto to retail. They want to cut it off at the source. They are also limita limiting uh, bank payments for uh, crypto as well. They don't want you to transact in certain amounts for crypto. In fact, even in the US, um, there was an individual that messaged me just the other day and they mentioned, hey, you know, I can't buy X amount of dollars worth of crypto on Uphold, for an example. Their bank won't allow it. They called. They said, hey, this is not fraud. The bank said, we can't let this transaction go through. We're sorry. How crazy is it that we live in a world where crypto and our rights to buy crypto and our rights to, you know, be a part of this digital revolution is being stifled because the bankers don't want to lose power. And it's all steps towards a full control and greedy system created by the central bankers. We did see over here as well, US Senator Elizabeth Warren, who recently launched an anti-Bitcoin and crypto re-election campaign, is now pushing for a CBDC. Pay attention to the motives. Pay attention to what is happening around the government and government officials. The FedNow service, we talked about the FedNow service. 
full transparency, there will be a full breakdown video on the FedNow service going up uh, later today. But as we look at the FedNow service, they want to completely replace crypto by having this FedNow service. They think that's going to be extremely efficient compared to crypto. I do have a lot of uh, concerns about that. But what I find funny about it is that we live in this world where the, the government thinks, hey, you know, we can't let the people have any control over their money. We need bankers to be a part of the journey. And it's like insane because we know bankers have been the key individuals that are accountable for a lot of the issues around finance and around a lot of the collapses that we do see within within uh, finance as well. So why wouldn't the people want to get away from that? The UAE as well. So they just recently selected partners for uh, phase one of the digital currency program. It seems like we are starting to see a big move on uh, CBDCs. Now, this was with R3 as well, um, but there's a lot of things around this. They're talking about the first phase, how it could take about a year to you know 15 months. Um, it's very interesting that we are seeing a lot of pushes around CBDCs at the same time, um, almost like they want to have a coordinated full-on approach and launch of the CBDC programs. It definitely is getting uh, pretty scary out there. And even the IMF recently uh, posted this as well around uh, CBDCs, and they even made notes around it. Anderson actually posted this over on Twitter. And we do see designs that promote CBDC adoption, according to the author, that would be anonymity and no fees. Uh, wholesale CBDC would be very low risk for deposit intermediation, financial instability, and money velocity, while interest-bearing uh, retail CBDC equals very high risk. And here we have figure two, the risk to monetary policy inherent in CBDC designs. And we do see the first one up here, wholesale CBDC, non-interest bearing uh, retail CBDC, and then interest bearing retail CBDC. Then we also do see designs that promote CBDC adoption, to token based. Um, again, they even talk about a little bit around like interoperability, uh, no fees, anonymity, and all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of what we are seeing around CBDC is like, they're going to try to make it... Um, as retail friendly as possible, meaning they're going to market this in the way that most retail individuals will say, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Um, and those key keywords to focus on is safety, security, transparency. It's going to be a lot faster, cheaper, more secure, all this kind of stuff. Like we hear these terms get thrown around so much, even around the banking collapse that recently happened, right? We've seen um we've seen a lot of discussions around that the first thing that they came out and said was your deposits are safe and secure they're safe and secure they're backed don't worry they're insured all this stuff making sure that you as a retail individual is not going to the bank and saying hey i want my money right now they want to make sure that you are you know kept within that box the bankers the the big banks are just a box for your money they want to box you in. They want to keep you locked in because, hey, you taking your money out, that's a big no-no. It's a big problem. And we actually did see over here, expiration date of the digital yuan could lead to Bitcoin explosion. So if you guys did not read this, this is a great article going all the way back to September 22nd, 2022. Um, it's actually talking about the digital yuan and how there's actually a huge expiration system implemented around this under the pretext of a warming of the economy. The design consists of a removal of the currency from the bank accounts of users who have not used it in the time, or yeah, in the time the government uh, stipulates, sorry. Meaning, guess what? If you don't use that money in, we'll say 30 days, well, guess what? It gets removed. How insane is that? Now, this was going all the way back to 2022, but this got recently posted by Bitcoin News, a Bitcoin Maxi account. They said Bitcoin explosion. I think that this could lead to the explosion of many cryptocurrencies. In fact, the entire crypto market could have a major explosion from this. And I think that a lot of people are going to soon turn to crypto because at the end of the day, since the inception of crypto, what has been the biggest selling point? Decentralization. No control. And even right now, as we look at the world of CBDCs, we are seeing a major push around the world on researching, development, piloting, and soon to have a major launch of a, a lot of these CBDCs. And so far, there's already 11. And you can see all of these that are already launched and you can read all about it. But what I find crazy is I do think that a lot of the major countries, the G7, for an example, right? I think that we're going to see 
a harmonized approach. I think that we're going to see a harmonized launch of CBDCs within the major, major nations. And when we do see that, everything is going to change. I don't want to say it's going to change overnight, but I do think that it could happen very, very fast. And I think that's going to take a lot of people by storm. A lot of individuals are going to be shocked. And this is why I've said we need to prepare accordingly. We need to make sure that we are, you know, buying resources, buying physical, um, you know, currencies like gold and silver as well as buying crypto i think that everyone that is going to be left behind that you know is not stockpiling gold silver physical gold and silver by the way and crypto well guess what they are going to be truly shocked when things start to really move pretty quickly and also outside of politics right because i i don't care to be a republican or a democrat i don't really care about that um we just recently seen donald trump say our currency is collapsing and will no longer be the world standard. Listen closely to this. Our currency is crashing and will soon no longer be the world standard, which will be our greatest defeat, frankly, in 200 years. There will be no defeat like that. That will take us away from being even a great power. And I want you all to understand that this is the reality. I even said it yesterday. I said, if you want to be in disbelief that the US dollar is not going to collapse and it's going to remain the, the global reserve currency, go ahead. Believe that. Believe what you will. But I want you to all understand that the BRICS are moving extremely fast. They want to develop a new currency. And I think this video here, this it's about a four minute long video. I'm going to play it at the end here. I do think that everyone should go check out um, this individual's Twitter as well as I believe that they might have a YouTube channel, but his name is Peter Saint um, Anje. I hope that I'm saying that name right. I'm probably not, but go check him out over on Twitter. Um, this is this is probably one of the best breakdowns of what's happening around the bricks, especially with the dollar and how and if they will challenge the dollar. Listen closely to this video, and then I will sum up a few things. Hey guys, there's some news in the dollar. Last week, Egypt joined the BRICS Development Bank, the gateway drug to the BRICS grouping seeking to replace the United States as economic and financial linchpin of the world. It's another brick in the wall. Beyond the founding members, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, everybody gets a letter, about two dozen countries are either formally joining or expressing interest, including Argentina, Nigeria, and Mexico. Now, the development bank doesn't mean these countries are going to be colonies of China. It's mainly access to cheap loans, especially from China. So in a sense, countries are being paid to join. But once they're in, the goal of BRICS is to unite their political and economic muscle to diversify from dependence on the dollar and on the increasingly unreliable and bullying United States. So it's not quite as formal as the EU, but the goal is similar, a strong voice independent of the US. This matters because the BRICS combined are already nearly half the world's population, about 3.2 billion, sorry, that was my cat, about 3.2 billion on the way to 4 billion with those new countries kicking the tires. Their combined GDP is 27 trillion, even in nominal terms, so that's higher than the US, and in PPP terms that control for local prices and manipulated currencies, their economies are twice the size of the US already, and they're growing faster, so they're on their way to three times. So BRICS is definitely a challenge to U.S. dominance, more than the EU will ever be. The question is, will BRICS also be a challenge to the U.S. dollar? Because one strategic goal of BRICS is to build a currency to rival the dollar. In the near term, countries in the BRICS are more likely just to use their own currencies to replace the dollar, for inner BRICS trade at least. Still, remember that's nearly half the world. And if they could develop a euro-like common currency, especially if China is willing to take one for the team and effectively subsidize usage of the new currency, that's what they do with the yuan, then they could be an actual contender. I think most people sort of knee-jerk dismiss poor country currencies as if they're just bad at money. But quality of a currency has nothing to do with per capita income. It's based on the prudence of monetary policy. So is the currency a good store of wealth or is it inflationary? and whether the currency is used to bully other countries on foreign policy or even domestic policy like the US does. So if BRICS were to bring in a stable currency and a non-interventionist policy, it would be a contender even for non-BRICS trade that makes up the other half of world trade. 
The real game changer for BRICS and the dollar, though, would be something both China and Russia have flirted with, a gold-backed currency. Russia implemented an odd kind of gold backing early in the Ukraine war, and both China and Russia have been buying gold at a furious rate for 20 years. So that's fueling speculation that they could be planning to use it to back a currency. If they do roll out a gold-backed currency, that would be one actually redeemable in gold, like you can mail your dollar and they mail you back some gold, BRICS would overnight move towards dominance over the dollar. It would become the safest store of wealth among currencies, and if you paired it with a non-interventionist foreign policy, it would be a clear winner over the dollar. In another video, I talked about consequences of a dollar collapse if this does happen, so consequences for the U.S. economy, and a gold-backed competitor would be the fastest way to do it. Now, this is probably still years off. They're still developing systems to replace the dollar's payment rails called SWIFT, even for internal BRICS trade. Still, the writing's on the wall. As long as the U.S. runs trillion-dollar deficits while weaponizing the dollar, there will be interest in finding or even building a replacement. And given China's deep interest and deep pockets, it's only a matter of time. All right, we'll be watching. See you next time. And I do believe, by the way, here is all the links to this individual. You guys can go check him out. But um, I do believe that this is what's happening. And yeah, it's not going to happen all at once. But I do think that it is slowly trickling into reality. And I think that everyone should start preparing now um, because I think that's in everyone's best interest. And then we are seeing the collapse of the U.S. dollar as a currency as well as a global standard. And I do think that crypto um, itself should be in everyone's best interest as well. Uh, now, do I think that there's going to be a one size fits all? And I think that crypto is going to solve every issue around, you know, currency and stuff like that. No, but I do think that uh, crypto is a great way for us to protect our privacy as well as protect our control over currency. Um, a lot of people want to value their currencies in US dollars. I don't think that that is the best case scenario because I do think that in time, the US dollar as a valuable currency will soon change. A lot of people thought that I was crazy for saying that as well, but go look at some of the currencies around the world. I mean, some of them are being devalued at 90 plus percent, uh, which is a big deal. So with all of that in mind, I do think that we need to start preparing because I don't believe that there's going to be a new reserve currency. I think that the reserve currency standard, the idea of a reserve currency is going to soon end. And I think that what we will see is all of these nations having their own currencies, which will soon be CBDCs, and it's going to be concerning for those that were not preparing and not getting to decentralized uh, currencies, because guess what? Those CBDCs are not going to be f for the good of the general public, and uh, the central bankers will be in more control than ever before. And again, this is all for decentralization to be realized in, but in terms of central bankers, meaning there will no, no longer be a centralized reserve currency. It will be a decentralized system, but it will be built on CBDCs. And who will get screwed? Well, the general public, you and me. So we need to make sure that we are preparing accordingly and uh, resisting CBDCs as much as we possibly can. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. Uh, so it's up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.